Hey, North Road Church, it's Matt. I hope things are going good. This is day two of our Devo series that we're doing leading up to Easter. And if you're joining us today for the first day, here's what we're doing. We're starting at the Lord's Supper, walking from the Lord's Supper all the way to the cross and then on to the resurrection, which we will get to together on Sunday morning. Yesterday, we started the Lord's Supper and we talked about how Jesus fed the guys. He told them he was going to be leaving the the earth to die for their sins. He then went to the garden and prayed. And then we saw Judas arrest him. And we talked about the concept that there's a statement out there that Thomas Fuller in 1650 came up with. And here's what he said, that it's always darkest before the dawn. And, And what we said about yesterday's Devo was, that's a lie. It isn't always darkest before the dawn. It's darkest at midnight. And then it starts to get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. And what we talked about is the moment that the guys that were 12 disciples were with Jesus and he was arrested, they probably thought that was the darkest moment, but it wasn't. It was going to get darker and darker and darker before midnight came and before the sun started to rise again. And, and, And we have to know one thing, and that is there's a guy named Victor Hugo that changed the statement Uh, uh, or he rewrote the statement because he never liked the statement that Thomas Fuller made either. And here's what he said. Instead of saying it's darkest before the dawn, let's say that the darkness will be erased when the sun rises. And I said, man, that's an incredible thing that we need to remember. The darkness is erased when the sun rises because the S-O-N, Jesus, when he rose from the dead, darkness fled. And we won and it was over. No matter what we're going through, whether we're going to coronavirus or we're going through something else in our life, God has won. He has sealed our fate and we have a life in him. Now, day two, we're back at the Lord's Supper. And what I want you to notice about the Lord's Supper is this, that that Jesus is talking to them and he's starting to give them understanding of what's going to happen. He goes, man, I'm going to go and I'm going to die on the cross and it's going to be a gruesome death, but I'm doing it for your salvation. And Peter, who's always Mr. Talk first, think later, looks at him and goes, man, that'll never happen to you. I will die before you do that. (laughs) And Jesus looks at him and goes, Peter, man, I've been praying for you that Satan wouldn't sift you like wheat, but I'm here to tell you tonight, you're gonna die, you'll deny me three times before the rooster crows, man. In other words, before morning, you're gonna act like you don't have a clue who I am. Peter looks at him and goes, there's no way that's happening, man. I'm telling you, and Jesus goes, man, I'm telling you, this is gonna occur. And what we find in Matthew chapter 26 is the scripture that reads exactly the account. And I wanna read it to you. Now, Peter, after Jesus was arrested, was sitting outside in the courtyard, waiting to hear what was gonna happen to Jesus. And a servant girl came up to him and said, hey, you were with the Galilean that they just arrested. But Peter denied it before them all saying, I don't know what you mean. I I don't know what you're talking about. That's the weirdest thing. I I don't know the guy. And when he went out of the entrance, so in other words, he's like, man, I got to get out of this situation. So he sneaks out of the entrance and he saw another servant girl. And she said to the bystanders, I know that guy. He was with Jesus. The guy they just arrested, he was with them. Man, that guy knows that guy. And again, he denied it this time with an oath. He said, man, I swear on my mama's grave, Jesus is not connected to me. I don't know the man. And after a little while longer, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, certainly dude, come on, don't lie to us, own up to it. Certainly you're one of them for your accent gives it away. In other words, you sound just like him. You come from the same location. We know it's you, just own up to it. And the Bible says, then he began to invoke a curse on himself. Man, he is kind of changing his entire demeanor in this moment and basically saying, man, may the heavens fall on my head if I know this guy. I don't know the guy. And the Bible says then that he curses, that he begins to, to shout off four-letter words in, his, in, 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 in Greek or whatever they're speaking at this time, saying things that no mama's ears should hear because he's so stressed out by the fact that they're accusing him of knowing Jesus. And he no longer gets the curse words out and says, I don't know the man that immediately a rooster crows. And before the rooster crows, he remembers that Jesus says it before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And when he heard this, the Bible says he wept bitterly. In other words, he was broken by the choices he made. Let me ask you a question. You ever been broken because your lifestyle denied Jesus? You ever been just kind of like, man, I I don't like who I am. I don't like the choices that I make. I don't like the sins that I continually fall into. I I wish I was stronger in my faith with God. And I hate the fact that I just feel like my life sometimes denies Christ. I think that's what Peter felt. But Peter made a statement that I think we need to make as well. 
Peter said this, God, I love you so much that I will not, I, I will die before I deny you. Now, you could go, well, Matt, that was a stupid statement for him to make because obviously before the rooster crowed three times before daylight broke, he was denying Christ. And I would say, yes, you're right. He did, he denied Christ, but he did something after that. He came to Jesus and Jesus looked at him and he said, do you love me? And, and, and Peter goes, God, you know I love you. And they walked through this whole discourse and, 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 and Peter finally goes, God, I love you. I wanna live my life for you. And Jesus goes, well then go feed my sheep. Go do what I've called you to do. Don't run away, don't deny me, walk with me. And the Bible says from that moment on, Peter began to walk for Jesus. And I don't know if you know the story for, Je uh, for of Peter for Jesus, but here's the story. The Bible tells us a very short amount about Peter's death, but here's what it says. That when it came time for Peter to die, he was martyred for his faith. In other words, people who hated Christians got a hold of Peter and were going to crucify him just like Jesus to kind of mock him. And here's what he said. Don't crucify me upside right. Crucify me upside down because I'm not worthy of hanging the same way my Savior did. And he died claiming Jesus as his savior. The moral of that, and what I want you to get from this is this. You're not defined by who you were yesterday, by who you were three weeks ago, by who you were two years ago, by who you were 10 minutes ago. You're defined by who you are right now. And you might've denied Jesus with your actions so many times, but like Peter, what if you did an about face? What if you went to the, the, the most depth, deep, deep, dark depths of who you are, these things you've been holding back from God and said, hey God, I will not fall to those things. I will not deny you with my life. And you went to God and said, God, I need your help taking these things away. I don't wanna deny you with my actions, with my words, or with my lifestyle. Peter screwed up at the cross, but he succeeded when he died. I've screwed up before, but I want to succeed when I die, don't you? And what Peter's story teaches us is that until the day we take our last breath, we have an opportunity, an opportunity to proclaim Christ with our life. Have an awesome day. I will see you tomorrow. And I pray that today you proclaim Christ with your life. And if you're not, it's okay. Just get your heart right. Talk to God. Say, God, I want to be like Peter. I don't want to deny you in the end. I want to claim your truth and your greatness in the end. And maybe I haven't so far, but God, don't be done with me yet. Use me in a mighty way. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.